Hello and welcome to The Chop Shot. My name is Dion Tucker. In this video, I'll share a 20 minute practice routine with you that'll help you keep your chops in shape on the trombone. I know for me, sometimes my schedule can get so busy that it just doesn't feel like there's enough time in the day for me to accomplish everything that I need to. And I always feel bad if I neglect my practicing in any way. So I came up with a routine that I could get in in a short amount of time and feel fulfilled, feel like I didn't miss out on a day of practice. Now this routine is not meant to be used as a normal day of practice. I think you should put in at least an hour of time on your instrument if you can daily. But this is great for if you're not able to put in that hour or if you're taking a day of rest and this is a light day and you're playing, just putting these 20 minutes in can be really helpful to you. Before we dive into the structure of the routine, I wanna send a big thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel so far. Between these instructional videos and the Black Tremone Chronicles, I'm definitely feeling the love out there, so thank you so much. And in the upcoming weeks, my Patreon page will be up and running, so make sure you check that out. In the meantime, if you want to support the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get a heads up on whenever I put out a new video. So let's look at how we can break down these 20 minutes into a holistic practice session. So we're going to start off with two minutes of just observing what's going on with our air function. Then we're going to move into three minutes of long tones, followed by one minute rest. We'll move into three minutes of articulation practice, followed by one minute of rest. We'll move into three minutes of lip flexibility practice, again, one minute rest. And then the last six minutes, we're gonna play for five minutes, some music, an etude, improvisation, a melody, something like that. And we'll leave that last minute to observe and just kind of take in everything that happened to send us off into our day. So I always like to start the practice day off with some breathing and just observing what's happening with the breathing cycle. So I put a little video of how the diaphragm functions up there just so we can observe its position in the body and the range of motion of the diaphragm. A lot of times we observe it much lower in the body like by our belly button but really it's the, the diaphragm pushing down on everything else. So we want to remember this picture when we go to play the horn, just so we have an idea of what's happening internally. Now I usually leave my hand there for a couple repetitions or so, just so I can transfer the feeling of what was happening with the air cycle into playing the instrument. I'll just play some glissandos, no tongue at all. Really just trying to connect my sound with the airstream. My lips are still secondary at this point. They're just kind of along for the ride. I'll move into the lower register. And the same concept applies. I'm really just thinking about what was the function of the diaphragm and how is that tied to the sound. Same thing, once you feel comfortable, start adding in some glissandos. This should feel relaxing almost, almost meditative if you're doing it right. Just continue to ride that airstream. Take the note up an octave. Same thing on this partial. Just get a feel for where it is and then add the glissando. We want to keep our airflow constant 
but we don't have to blow the air. We just have to constantly release the air. And again, no tongue, no nothing to get in the way of the airstream. Now, I know one of the major things we do after we play long tones is ask, how did our lips feel? But I don't want us to ask that question this time. Just observe what was happening with your air cycle and how closely did that match with when you were just releasing the air and observing the cycle as it was going without the instrument. Whenever we pick up the horn, we don't want to go too far away from that air cycle. So now every other exercise that we do moving forward is going to be based off of this long tone. How is the air flowing and how is it going to be embellished by the tongue in this next exercise? So we're not leaving what we originally started. We're still observing how the diaphragm is functioning and making all the air move. Now we're just going to embellish that as we move into the next exercise. Now your tongue is going to be free to articulate at whatever rate or timing that you want. Now the purpose of this is really for you to feel the tongue get out of the way after you use it. Without using a metronome or anything like that, that just frees up the tongue to be able to explore how it's actually used in articulation. When you get comfortable, move up a half step. Remember, there's no regulation, there's no timing, nothing. You're just exploring. How does the tongue get out of the way after you use it? Really, it's just a slight embellishment on the airstream, and it's gone. This exercise can be practiced in whatever octave you're comfortable in, so this works equally good down low. Remember, you're just playing long tones, and the tongue is only there to embellish that long tone. So for me, it feels really good to be able to let the tongue explore different types of articulation without having a metronome going or trying to dictate what your tongue is going to do. Now, we need to, in my opinion, have at least a day of when we can just let go and have some time to explore. So this is the perfect time to do that. Now, we're going to continue on with that long tone theme, and we're going to take that into the lip flexibilities. So these lip flexibilities are nothing more than embellishments of the long tone. Now, I'm not sure the origin of this exercise. I did learn it from Steve Ture when I was back in college, but it's a great one to just get the chops nice and loose. I think the end goal is to be able to do it fast enough so that you can do it all in one breath. Now, since we're trying to be efficient on time, I would move up to the next partial when I feel comfortable. I'm still thinking about the diaphragm and how it's functioning and moving that airstream. Again, the lips are secondary. The airstream is first. And when I feel comfortable, I'll add the next partial up to the mix. And I'm just looking for how does the air feel as it's flowing across the lips. I'm not trying to move my lips into any specific position. I'm just letting that movement happen naturally. And stay as relaxed as you can in between each airstream. 
Now when you feel comfortable, move up to the next partial. And this is the highest partial that we'll play. When you get to the top note, play glissando all the way out to seventh position. This is gonna get shorter and shorter as you move the slide out each position. And remember, these are all just embellishments of the long tone. So my air is constant and I'm staying relaxed. For me, it's so liberating to practice lip flexibilities without really focusing on what my lips are doing. So if we take that same original concept and just we're just embellishing a long tone, really when we're doing lip slurs, take that concept into that and it'll just take your focus of attention away from what your lips are doing and you can just focus on the airstream. Now putting all of that together, it's time to play a little bit of music. Now, it doesn't matter what you play, whether it's an etude, whether it's a melody, if you want to improvise, it's totally up to you. But the key thing is to be able to tie together the articulation, tie together the airflow, and tie together that flexibility in order to make music. These exercises are just a blueprint for you to be able to come up with your own 20 minute practice routine. Now I would suggest you hit all the topics that I covered here. Make sure you're doing some long tones, make sure you're practicing your articulation, make sure you're practicing your lip flexibility, make sure you observe what's happening with your airstream. But most importantly, make sure you play a little music at the end of the day. Now if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out. And I'll see you next time at the Chop Shop.